Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Today is a quick video showing how I fixed a Discovery 2200 metal detector. This detector was given to me because it didn't work. So I brought it down to the lab and took it apart to see if I could fix it. So here we go. We have here a nice little metal detector. Metal detector is operating very erratically when you turn it on. It just seems to auto scan and auto find. I've had it apart once and resoldered some of the contacts. So I'm just going to show you how to take apart one of these. This is a Discovery 2200. It's a very popular one it's being sold at Canadian Tire for about $350. So follow along and you'll see how to take it apart. First step, two screws to release it from the shaft, your Phillips head. Screws come out. Five pin DIN is now holding the uh, the two search coils. Pull straight back. There you go. Batteries push in and up. Not the greatest design, but it seems to work. Now, there's no screws anywhere to see how to get this thing apart. It all seems to be one piece. This flexible panel comes off with the use of a spudger. A spudger is used to pry open these tight electronics. You can see it's been in there already. Peeling this little bit back will expose a screw. Again, a Phillips head. You do not have to remove it, you can just leave it captured in there. One on the other side as well. Which wasn't properly seated the last time I had it apart. Normally there are screws holding this assembly together. I took them apart while I was diagnosing it the last time. Next, we've got two screws that hold this DIN connector assembly in place. Headphone jack just takes up their pliers, loosen the nut off. Okay, there we have the board. When I was in here the last time, I resoldered these points. Now I'm going to take a close look at these chips, the capacitors, and make sure that we don't have any cracks in this, either the uh, signal lines or in the solder. Okay, this is the suspect connections right here. We've got four wires from the um, five or six pin DIN connector coming up. And the four connections are right there, so I'm going to resolder them. First, we'll put some flux on. Heat it up and then add some Kester 6040.
I use one of these little pump bottles with the isopropyl alcohol. Stiff toothbrush works well to clean it. I turned it better. Now I'll take a look and see if I can find anything else that looks suspect. This is going to be difficult to see, but the components after the input from the coils are right in here. Some of them look like the solder's a little cracked, maybe a little gray. So I'm going to go in there and try and solder them just with my standard soldering tip rather than using hot air. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the film or not, but we'll give it a try. Clean off our tip. Tin it. Maybe we'll add a little bit of uh, flex to this. Anything on the input is the important part because you don't get a good signal and you can't do anything with it for processing. That's not good. One component's off. A new set of crosslock tweezers which can be ideal for this. It's a tiny little component.
There's a plus mark on here. You line up the plus on the battery, slide in this hole, push, and it clips under the clip. Now we have the unit ready to test. Power it on. Sensitivity is working. Discrimination is working. Notch is working. Zap is working and it's no longer being erratic and confused. Now let's try testing it with the coil. There's a detent on the connector, it fits on with the slot. Reassembly is the reverse of taking it apart. Align the circuit board with the screw holes. Four small screws to mount into the uh, faceplate assembly. If I had $350, I'd just go out and replace this darn thing because it's a real pain in the butt to try and fix. Not well engineered as far as repairing at all. They designed it to be disposable. This is a fussy little two flange setup where it's got some catches on the bottom. And it lines up to the holes and it interlocks with the second piece. Well, sometimes you get lucky. I've had some pretty good luck with repairs. I also have quite a bit of experience doing it. Some common faults to look out for are dirty contacts on any type of connector, cracked or broken solder joints at any kind of entrance or exit to the device, cold solder joints, which may look a little bit gray or cracked, and in some power circuits, the power fed 
for example, on laptops goes. Typically, the FETs will go short. So in this case, it was a combination of cold solder joints, and I think the unit's been dropped a few times. I managed to fix it by reheating the contacts and reheating some suspect components. To keep me motivated, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and I'd really like it if you could subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.